we are still at the cold bath house in Albany, and uh, we're doing a second segment today, and this one is on a fellow by the name of Jigger Johnson. Unfortunately, Jigger is the one that got away. Uh, we have searched all over the Conway area, and we have inquired with number number of local historians. In fact, this very morning, we checked two more cemeteries in Conway, and we have never been able to find Jigger Johnson's grave. So we're hoping that if somebody that sees this segment may have some information on it, as we would love to know more. I'm going to let Rick tell you the story of Jigger, and it is quite a piece. First thing, uh, we're going to move over to another sign. Uh, there are quite a few of these um, around the, uh, the, the area here. But uh, this was also an area not just for farming, but for, um, for logging. And the man that we're going to talk about in a minute or two here uh, is somebody that I grew up, having grown up in Conway, uh, I, I grew up hearing about this man and his, his, he's almost like a Paul Bunyan type of character. I mean, bigger than life uh, and a logger. And I'm going to tell you about him in just a minute. Uh, but he is the one we haven't been able to find. We've had a couple of, um, of, of people who have said that they knew where he was. Uh, he is apparently in a pauper's grave. Uh, we originally thought in North Conway but we have not been able to find a pauper section up there. And a few people have given us some uh, pointers. There was a historian who used to work at the Conway Library, David Emerson, who apparently did know where his grave was. So apparently it exists, but uh, we haven't been able to find it. And it's the only one that we haven't, but we felt that Jigger was big enough in life, if not bigger, that we should include him. Absolutely. <laughs> We're standing another again with a board here that tells us about the corporate logging uh, and some of the larger mills in New England. But we're here to talk about Jigger. Let me give you a couple. Uh, I'm going to pull a few things from the article from our book. Is that okay with you, Bill? It works for me. Okay. Um, First of all, when he was born, he was supposedly born wearing logging boots, holding an axe, chewing tobacco, and smoking a pipe. <laughs> Not sure if all the same time, I guess so. Uh, Jigger himself thought, uh, admitted that his reputation was maybe a bit exagger exaggerated. But he, he himself claimed he could run faster, jump higher, squat lower, move sideways quicker, and spit further than any son of a bitch in camp. Um, quite a guy. I know, that's my type of guy. I, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah you, this Bill's a lot like that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you knew him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of grew up with him, and, you know, we knew his stories, uh, at least sort of. Um, Bob Monahan, who was a... Uh, one of the founders of the Mount Washington Observatory apparently was a fairly good friend of, of Jigger's. And uh, he, he actually, you can find information from, from, uh, from, from, uh, from him that is probably closer to the truth. Apparently he was a fairly short guy, uh, about 5'6", I guess, weighed 160 pounds, but according to Monaghan, that's with all muscle. Again, kind of like Bill. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one of the famous stories is that, uh, well, by the age of 12, actually, he was a cook's helper in a logging camp. And at that time, apparently, when you came in to eat, you were supposed to be silent. And I guess a few drunk loggers came in, and uh, th at that point, Jigger was known as Cookie because he was working in the kitchen, and I guess give him some tr gave him some trouble, but but Johnson fought back, and he jumped on the drunks, biting off the ear of one of them, and 
you know, I, I, that's one of the favorite story, famous stories. I don't think you've ever done that. No, no, no. no, no. Uh, that sounds like a more recent boxer. <laughs> <laughs> but by the age of 20, I mean, by 20 years old, he was the head chopper of a camp in Androscoggin, on the Androscoggin River. Uh, and uh, actually, after the fight, uh, the people, the other Tawagas that were in there, uh, actually bought Johnson a got him a new shirt, uh, and uh, and and a pound of chewing tobacco for standing <laughs> up to the rules, I guess. Uh, but he definitely had an incredible uh, reputation. One of them was that he could uh, that he'd survive in the winter by eating bark. You've done that, yeah. and. Old and, Boy and, Scout trick. Yeah. <laughs> Real old Boy Scout trick. And catch bobcats with his bare hands. Uh, could fell a tree. I mean, this is I mean, this is a, a skill. But apparently he was incredible at how good he was at falling a tree. He could actually say, Okay, that tree is gonna go right there and he he could do it. Um but at some point getting the, the wood out of the forest wasn't paying as well as what it used to. So he went on to other jobs. Uh, he was a trail builder, fire watcher on Mount Shikaro, Carter Dome. Um, uh, on rainy days, however, he used to stay in and apparently just drink as much alcohol as he could. He, he did have a fondness for the drink. Um, that you don't have. No, I think it's more like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, but you know, <laughs> he was fired from one of his jobs because he put made a still, and that <laughs> got on fire. <laughs> and later on, he went to work for the Civilian Conservation Corps. That was during the Depression, and he was pretty successful at that. Uh, and you know, the, he was hired to train. Mm -hmm. Other CCC workers, you know, who weren't used to living in the woods. Apparently, he was really good at it, but he quit. And the reason he quit, now this reminds me of you again a little bit, because in order to work for the CCC, you had to shave. Oh. And you had to take a bath now and then. <laughs> and, and you had to study. Oh, and wow. <laughs> this um, uh, he what did this? He really didn't want to do those things. So he spent his last later years as a trapper, living in a cabin in Passa Conway, what is now Passa Conway. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, but he did respect the law, and he had been in town in Conway, I assume, celebrating a lynx pelt that he had sold, uh, and he decided that he needed to go back to his, his traps because you had 24 hours to inspect your traps. Mm -hmm. That was part of the deal. And so he was in a car on an icy road uh, going back down, and I guess I'm out there in Pasta Conway. And as he was trying to get out of the car, um, as I said here, the instruct indestructible living legend um, basically was – when he slid off the honey road, pinning the and pinning him between a tree and the car, apparently. Yeah. And well, he wasn't he was driving. Le he no, he was. He had a friend and he was around. leaving, and he did die soon after that, and was and, and was taken to the Memorial Hospital. But uh, that was that was the end of his life. Is mm -hmm. indestructible and as incredible as he was, apparently. So anyway, we thought he was worth at least mentioning in our book. Oh, absolutely. And right around the corner from here is the Jigger Johnson campground. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, uh, he was well enough thought of that they named the camp campground mm -hmm. after him. And... Um, Maybe one of these days we'll find him. Yes, and uh, we, again, if somebody has information about this, we'd love to hear it. Yes, we yeah. would. <laughs> so, uh, you know, f feel free to contact us. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, Jigger, wherever you are, yeah. rest in peace. <laughs> sure he is. He's prowling the mountains. <laughs> and I, and I hope you have a still somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> As we're coming out of the um, Colbeth uh, historical site, as you can see on this sign, uh, you also see the 
that you can walk to the Jigger Johnson campground from here. And basically it is right around the corner. Um, so yeah, he's a famous name right here. I've also heard uh, a red somewhere, and I, I, I don't know if I can go find it right off the bat, but I believe Jigger worked on the farm here at some point. But I can't, I don't know if I can prove that. 